So you ran for office twice. You ran for mayor of San Francisco, which, which of course, I all those clips are up on YouTube now uh, from your campaign. Oh, um, good. I probably don't know know about a lot of my. I don't spend a lot of time watching myself on TV. As little sure. As actually no 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 i understand but, but yeah like stuff from your mayoral run in 1979 and then you ran for president with the green party in 2000 do you have a favorite run for office well i mean the really wild one of course was the mayor campaign you know i was barely 21 years old still fresh off, off the boat from boulder i suppose i moved out to san francisco in end of february 78 to pursue punk rock dreams when the rent was cheap enough to behave like that you know it brought the beats there summer of love and then it brought me and many many more people who did many great things but uh anyway so um boulder growing up because i to, to finish back to jfk it's not just jfk that affected me so deeply and all um, I was a real news hound even then at age five. You know, I'd watch a cartoon or two, but not sit all afternoon and do that. And then the news would come on. And I can't remember whether the Huntley Brinkley report or then Channel 4 with Clyde Davis, the local dude, was, uh, and Weatherman Bowman with his little marker and all his enthusiasm and stuff, or his rival with the mustache on another local show, Stormy Rotman. But uh, anyway, we mainly watched Weatherman Bowman. But um, I watched all of it with equal fascination. I mean, I'm told my favorite cartoon characters when I was that little was Bullwinkle and Senator Everett Dirksen. <laughs> but, uh, but so I saw the Berlin Wall go up, and, you know, it would sometimes might be on while we were eating dinner early on. And you'd see things like dogs being sicked on mar marchers for things like voting rights across the Pettus Bridge in Selma. You know, the hoses, the dogs. I don't know whether it was that exact protest, but that does trigger some shit at me. Whenever I see the moving footage of that, am I... Mother just perked up and said, I don't understand why anybody would hate somebody else for the color of her, their skin in a very lecturing mom tone I knew well. And that stuck with me. You know, it, 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 that made perfect sense to me. And there was a boulder was almost all white. But, uh, you know, how can you hate somebody because of the color of their skin? That's just wrong. And that, of course, was also when TV network news was a lot less censored and sugarcoated and dumbed down like it is today. They, they, they all, all, it was only those three networks. Plus there was PBS and stuff. And they put a lot of money into their news networks, even if it didn't make that much money back because they wanted to out scoop the other, you know, NBC and CBS were constantly trying to outdo each other. And ABC wasn't far behind to playing catch up and stuff all the time. So they wanted, they wanted kick ass news reporting with international bureaus all over the world. So you saw bloody Vietnam wounded soldiers in Vietnam. You saw um, rounded up North Vietnamese in the water with duct tape over their faces and stuff. You saw Viet Cong. Maybe you saw the attacks with the dogs and everything else. And um, occasionally, even later on, pollution and all. So uh, I, I grew up pretty interested and pretty passionate at a very early age and was reading the local paper, the Boldy Daily Camera, too. And my parents were crying, oh, yeah, look at this, look at this, uh, look at the city council election. There's a hippie running for city council. And he came in next to last, John Link, but his quote to the camera was, it was a conservative paper and stuff, and they still had a conservative sheriff and a stereotypical jowly police chief from 50s cop movies or something. Myron Teagarden. But uh, anyway, um, but, but John Link, his quote after the election, even a creep like me got a thousand votes. <laughs> Next city council election, I'm older, getting more interested in these things. My hair was well past my shoulders by then. So, you know, and that was still a dangerous thing to do, even a town, in a town overrun with hippies like Boulder was. But I um, wish they had had better musical taste, some of them. But anyway, um, so uh, then there was a, there was a, there was much a much more concocted prankster. Well, the next time by a guy named John Davenport, 
And his picture, when they had all the candidate pictures and their statements right before the election, suit and tie man this, suit and tie man that, whatever. Then here's a guy in a pirate suit with, if I recall, an eye patch with a, some of his teeth blacked out and stuff. John Davenport. I will ban cars from the city of Boulder and other things like that. And I thought, wow, that guy's cool. So then we were a little older and I hadn't quite left town yet. And me and my longtime close friend and, uh, you know, the troublemaker, my parents kept trying to get me to stop hanging out with anymore. But I just didn't because he's also the smartest kid in the school, but the one they couldn't control. Great sense of humor, super creative guy, beloved, dear friend to this day. Always hang out when we go back. And we talked about running a slate for the school board in tutus and, you know, Travis Bickle mohawks because the punks <laughs> didn't have them yet on a free drugs for children available at playgrounds. <laughs> never got around to it smoking you didn't do it speed. i don't know but then later here i am in san francisco and i'm folded into the back of our original drummer bruce schlesinger who called himself ted i think it's his 70th birthday today by the way and um folded into the back of his powder blue vw bug he may still have and uh and um, yeah, he's saying, "Hey, Jell, hey, Biafra, you got such a you got such a big mouth. You should run for president. No, no, you should run for mayor." And there was a mayor election on. Aha! I think I will. So then we arrived to the Pierre Ubu show we were going to, which was a at a kind of an anti audience venue called the Old Waldorf, where there was little tables all the way to the front of the stage, two drink minimum with watery cokes for the teens, like me or barely out of their teens, whatever. And um, so uh, there, there we went. And the minute I walked in the door, I started telling people they were running for I was running for mayor. And they got really excited, more excited than I thought they were going. Oh my God, what have I done? I need a platform quick. Got a felt pen, got a napkin, started writing down my platform when Periubu was blowing us all away about three feet away up on the stage. First thing to my head, John Davenport, ban cars from the city mm -hmm. of San Francisco. Then it just popped into my head yeah, make police officer an elective office. People vote for their cops every four years, and it's the districts who they patrol, which means the cops would have to live in the neighborhood, that they vote that they vote that way. I mean, George Floyd would still be alive if police were elected, and so many others too, yeah. before and since. So I stand by that one. I'm sure other people have thought of it too, but I absolutely stand by that as a really good idea. I'm with you. And some of the what were some of the others? Um the uh Harvey Milk and Mayor George Moscone murders were very fresh in people's minds. So uh, I, I said, and Proposition 13, that horrible anti-tax scam measure that they credit with launching the so-called Reagan revolution, um, mm -hmm. or like corporate coup that's still going on, if you ask me. Yeah. But um, so the city was starting to become a little bit bare in the cupboard looking for things to cut. So I was like, nah, because the state wasn't kicking down money anymore. They lost their tax base because of Proposition 13, which mainly gutted the schools. And California went from number one in the country, primarily because of Jerry Brown's father, the governor, Pat Brown, who built a lot of the schools and the universities got that over the ground. But they went from number one in education and after a bunch of years of Proposition 13, I think we're still down around 49 or something. You get better education in Mississippi. Well, at least until you vote, it appears. But uh, you see what I'm saying. So I thought, okay, what are we going to do about this? Okay, have the Parks Department erect statues of Dan White, the murder of Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone, all in parks all over town. That'll get their attention. And let the Parks Departments sell eggs, tomatoes, and rocks to throw at them. That was another one. Then another one was um, since the, 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 the appointed mayor who was running for a real term and had already proved herself to be basically the meanest mayor I've ever experienced in that town. Even, you know, not as flamboyantly corrupt as Willie Brown, but uh, even like more just more hatred for the underprivileged on her sleeve and stuff, even more than Gavin Newsom does. But um, you, you know, the Margaret Thatcher, the wicked witch of the West, 
Diane Feinstein. And she was talking about cleaning up Market Street, you know, law and order, Diane Feinstein. We don't want San Francisco to become kook city, you know, which, uh, you know, which of course was a, an attack on not just the, the small punk community, but what was left of the uh, Summer of Love folks, gay LGBTQ, she was slapping them and everything. You know, she was she was nasty. So I thought, okay, still let's is. let oh I oh I know we could go on about her for yeah. an hour or two. Well, can I ask you a real quick well, aside on that? We have to we, we we'll get to if we really got to go into Guy and Frank and Feinstein. Fine, <laughs> let's wait until the end of the mayor campaign. All because, right, yo, I poked her too during that. <laughs> she knew it. But uh, basically, I thought, OK, I, I want to clean up Market Street, too. But I want to clean up the other end. That's where the headquarters of Bank of America, Chevron, uh, Bechtel Construction and all that good stuff. That's what needs cleaning up. So from now on, everybody working down there, which then the corporate media and the Chronicle interpreted as businessmen in general, must wear clown suits between the hours of <laughs> nine and five. That was the one that got the most commercial media play. And they left out the part that I, that, that was a direct attack on Feinstein because she was going to clean up the tenderloin, which, of course, she failed to do, as has every one of that same Democratic machine's choices for mayor ever since. But, uh, but then um, I wound up placing fourth out of 10. The third guy was a... Uh, gay landlord dude but mainly just a, like a landlord i remember harvey milk vote for me and people did and between me and david scott who came in number three we forced feinstein into a runoff she was not expecting to be forced into with her arch enemy and you know blood lively guys quentin cop Another long time. He was his own democratic machine and heavy handed and stuff. And it turned out to be the battle royale between downtown big biz, Feinstein, and the outlying conservative neighborhoods and the real estate interests. And that was Quentin Cop. And they were not the best of friends. So uh, the night of the, the election, not the runoff, but the other one, somebody from Feinstein's camp, maybe a spokesman, I wish it had been her, but uh, said, if somebody like Jello Biafra gets that many votes, this city is in real trouble. <laughs> Mission accomplished. 